I've been getting really excited lately about EMA clouds, um, particularly anchored EMA, because um, I was uh, early on, I, I was looking at Ripster's uh, EMA clouds, which are a really cool resource for um, being able to follow trades, you know, entries and exits, uh, mostly exits, but um, being able to, um, you know, just, just sort of gauge the, the relative strength of trends. Um, so here's his stock EMA clouds. Um, so you get the, the, the three, the five to 13, the 34 to 50, and the 72 to 89. Um, and those show sort of different overall trends. Um, obviously the five, five and 13 is a, is a much narrower trend. And if something breaks through the 13, then there's a good chance that that trend is over. Um, and sure enough, you can see, you know, once it breaks upward here, um, it, it hovers on the five, you know, uh, this is your early warning sign, but once it starts breaking through the 13, then you know it's over. You know, so you can get out with you know, you know a relatively good chunk of this move, um, if if you want a easy uh, easy to learn indicator. Um, th this is my understanding of it anyway, um, and and I you, you should go check out uh, Ripster's Twitter um, to to really understand how it can be used and the, the subtleties of it. But um, my interest in it was more that um, this is this is a uh, 10 minute, uh, works great on the 10 minute, so the five and 13, but if you move to a five minute, these are gonna be in different places. And so I wanted to anchor them in the sense that they would be the same on a five minute and a 10 minute chart. Um, so what I did was I created these um, anchored EMAs where uh, the, the default is, is, is it's specified in hours. So this is 1.5 hours, and the, I can show you in a minute how I got to that. Um, and then uh, the, the other option is the uh, hours slow. If you pick zero, then it uses um, the smoothing factor, which roughly actually translates to about where, um, you know, where the, the 13 is for the, the, the you know, the 1.5 to 13. This is actually not a, a five, obviously. I think it's a nine. Um, but the way that you can, the, the way that you can, um, translate that is you take the period uh, 10 minutes and then you have your um, hours 1.5 so you divide your hours by your uh, period so you want what you want is total number of minutes so this is you know 90 minutes um, and that's going to be your 90 ma because 90 minutes on a 10 minute chart is going to be nine bars um, so that's the upper the upper range here you can see is the nine not the, not the five um, so that's the 9 EMA, and then it uses a smoothing factor underneath the hood uh, of 1.5, which then it adds, um, you know, the the whatever four uh, EMAs to get to about the 13. Um, this may be a 12 actually. So that's th that that's just smoothing factor, and and you can see how it lines up almost exactly with the EMA itself, which I think is really interesting because. Um, that's basically all it is. So you could really take a single EMA, give it a different smoothing factor, because EMAs all use this smoothing factor because otherwise it would be, you know, angular lines. Um, and generally it uses a, a two, but you can do anything between, you know, one and two, and you can get, um, you know, pretty, pretty similar to just uh, a, a, the next EMA step up. Um, which I thought was kind of cool because I'll show you the fractal EMAs in, in a little bit that, that then instead of you just give it a single seed and it'll draw all of them on different scales, uh, which is kind of neat. But anyway, that's how you translate this hours into a, a specific EMA on the 10 minute. Um, and you can do it on any, you know, it's the same formula. You would just take the, the minutes, the hours and minutes. So in this case, it's 90 um, divided by the uh, period, which is 10. And that gives you nine, nine bars. So that's a nine EMA. Um, and you can do the same same thing on a five minute or a 30 minute or whatever you want, uh, whatever your favorite EMA is, that's how you translate it into this. Um, this hour slow is if you don't want to use the smoothing, you can give it a, give it your own, like, uh, let's say two hour, uh, and that'll, that'll define the other edge. So rather than just changing the smoothing factor of the EMA, it actually lets you hard code what you want that to be. So if you apply this, you can see it's a little bit less at two hours. Um, I'm not sure what, I think it might be three hours, but let's, uh, let's try 2.5 and see how far that gets us. Oh, that's too far. So it's, it's a little bit less than that for the 13. Um, 
but you can, you know, you could probably actually figure it out exactly using that formula. Um, I just can't do that kind of math in my head. Oops, I went the wrong direction. Um, yeah, 2.2. That's what it'll end up being. Um, so anyway, this is now an anchored, an anchored EMA. So where when we change this 10 minute to say a, a five minute, um, the, the the ripster ones are based on the the bars. Um, but that's going to change on a five minute chart because the, it, it's, you know, a nine EMA is based on nine bars of whatever chart you're in. Um, and that's, you know, fine and all, but this lets you anchor it. So this, this is now, um, you know, this is the, the nine to, to 13 on the 10 EMA. That's this lighter gray one. That's the one that we just added. Um, and that doesn't change. So you know that you, if you like that one, you can see it in different time periods and it will, it will not change. So the way that this works will stay the same. So you can even look at it on, you know, on a one minute um, and you can see that same range being respected in the, in the same way uh, because it's all based on the, it's based on the um, actual time rather than the, the number of bars that it looks back. Um, and, and meanwhile, I mean, it, depending on how you want to look at the various, um, the, the, the ripster ones are based on bars, which is also good. I mean, it, it definitely lets you see within a particular time frame how that time frame is responding to the price action. But if you're looking for a much bigger um, move, you know, on a, on a 10 minute, but you want to look at the one minute and see where that's, that is in relation to it, you need to have it anchored like this. Um, which is kind of cool. I mean, then you can you can start looking around at a lot of different time periods and and seeing where you know what it looks like on those um, comparatively. Um, but then you know, so I, I think that that on the ten minute that that lines up with the the nine to thirteen, and you can you know add however many you want. Um, but what I started to notice was that the because price action is fractal, and and what what I mean by that is it it is the same patterns repeated on different scales. So you can see head and shoulders on a one minute, you can see a head and shoulders on a, on a one hour, um, and, and you can see a head and shoulders on a one week, and they all mean the same thing in terms of price action because that, that uh, it's repeating patterns at different scales. Um, so what, what, I, what I realized at that point is that I can actually create automatic EMAs that will um, follow along regardless of your um, whatever time period you're currently in. And, and it works the same way as this anchored. So you give it a seed in, in, in this case. Um, and actually, let me grab that. So it's this fractal EMA clouds. Um, so you, you give it an initial seed and then a width, which is the smoothing factor I was talking about. So like 1.3 I found is um, gives you a pretty, pretty decent response. And then the density is <coughs> excuse me, the difference between, or the, the distance between the fractal bands. Um, and you can use these different, um, you, you know, the, the, the different uh, inputs here to make your own fractal bands that respond at different scales um, for, for whatever, you know, tweak it to your particular taste. I, I used these ones initially because they were pretty close to um, what I wanted to see for a rough match of Ripster's EMAs, um, but his are, are tuned and calculated for specific things. These are designed to be programmatically generated at specific scales um, that, that just increase as, as you increase your scale. Uh, the, and the cool thing about this is that because they're programmatically generated, they're the same. So if you pick one for the, you know, on, on the 10 minute, when you go to the day, it's going to be roughly similar. Um, and you can, you can see how these things start relating to each other in, in a larger context um, between micro trends and mega trends in a second when I, when I zoom out. Um, but this is, is set up the exact same way. So you can see that this, this, uh, um, and actually my smoothing factor is a little bit different than the Ripster one, but it, it creates the same nine to 13 EMA and then uses that as the seed. So it's the, the 90 minute, so that's 1.5 hours, uses that as the seed to generate all of them. And then the 4.0 is um, the, the distance between, so that's a multiplier, um, So and it's logarithmic. So the bigger you get, the bigger the distance gets um, based on the scale of the you know the, the chart that you're in. Um, so what this ends up doing is it, it creates these, these patterns um, for, for bigger and bigger timescale trends. 
that you can then see on a single chart. And this, this is gonna be heavily dependent because it's an EMA, it's dependent on how big the chart is. So the bigger your chart, the more accurate these are gonna end up being. Um, because if you have a five day chart, it's gonna start, the price has to start from someplace. Um, whereas if you have a two day chart, that price start is gonna be in a different place. And because the EMA calculates over the whole, it's actually gonna change these values slightly. So the, the period of the chart matters. Um, so if you really want to look at apples to apples comparisons, um, make sure you keep the, the chart range the same. Um, so we'll do it at, uh, we'll do like a 30 day. Um, so I'm going to go in here and change the, the 10 minute to a, well, we'll just leave it at 10 day. We can start, start at that. So you can see how they all explode upward from that. But from there, they start um, being weighted towards the, the current price. Uh, so a moving average takes the entire average up to that point and factors in the latest and, and a exponential moving average factors in the latest heavier. It weights it more than the, the previous, um, even though the previous still matters. So like the more recent the, the price action, the more it gets weighted, um, which is, is, I think, better for you know, determining trends because if something happened 10 days ago, obviously that's not as important as something that happened a day ago. <clears throat> so you can see already how this, these uh, are, are interacting with the, the price on various levels. So like you have these micro scales where you know, you'd know to get out around here and you'd have most of this move uh, because it, it touched into that nine and then it drops through. So then it's you know, a little choppy, but then when it drops all the way through, now it's dropping through bigger and bigger trend lines. Um, and these, these are almost like um, fluid supply demand zones. They, they act like resistance on different scales. And, and they do here as well, you know. So as they plunge through them, you know that this move is really significant, but then as it sort of normalizes, um, and on a, on a bigger time scale, you'll see more, um, more bands being created and they'll, they'll disappear from up here um, because of the fractal nature of them, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. So let's take a look at a 30 minute, um, not 36, let's go 30 minutes. So this is three times the scale, uh, but it's the same, it's the same price action. So, and it's the same bands. And, and you can see our original one up here. Um, and as it, as it dips through, we should, the, the next one up I think would be, let's, let's go up to like two hours um, because we wanna see new bands being drawn in down below. Um, and once it starts piercing through the, the lowest of the bands, and actually I think it might need to be four hours to see it. Um, it regenerates them based on the, on the chart itself. Um, actually, let's go up higher then. So this is going to be uh, eight hours. Let's look at eight hours. Um, and then you can see on the eight hour where it, it now, so it ditched that first, uh, the first um, line and added another one down here. And this is where it actually touched and, and responded to. So it's this fractal line that it finally resisted off of the next band down. Um, and that's, you know, you can only see those on the higher and higher uh, charts because it only draws five of them at a time. Uh, but as you get to, to smaller time, time frames, then let's go back to the, um, like the five minute then you'll see all of those, but it's missing the, the bottom one because it draws an extra one in on a lower scale. And that's just, again, they're fractal. It's based on that seed of the, you know, the one, and you can see this is our original, um, but you can also see it interacting with all of these other ones at the same time now. So you can see the bigger, um, the bigger trends that it's bouncing off of. So it's bouncing between these two massive ones, uh, the two massive bands here, um, and they're, once it breaks through, then it starts breaking through a lot more of them and you can see the overall trend changing. Um, and this is kind of handy if you're looking at it from a, you know, a macro scale, you can start seeing some of these um, bigger trend changes happening in, in, you know, in real time and how they're affected without having to individually have all of these different um, bands drawn in. Um, but what you're sacrificing is the um, you know, those Ripster EMA clouds are tuned. They are specifically those EMA ranges and they work on particular um, chart ranges for a reason. And, and that's because they're, they're tuned for a certain style of, of trading um, and, and a, a, the strategy that, that is, you know, 
pretty successful. Um, what I was trying to do here was use that as a basis and a springboard to draw these f fractal bands in so that they're, you know, the, the higher the scale, they're all proportional. Um, and with the defaults, it, it just, you know, it's proportional all the way up to whatever. I mean, you could have it, you, you know, go all the way to, uh, you know, one week on a, on a max and it'll, it'll draw even more of them. So you can see over time how uh, this is a, a weekly chart. Um, they just keep going up, even though they'll pierce through, they'll hit the next band below, but that becomes the resistance area for um, bigger moves. And it, and it very rarely, if ever, pierces through, but when it does, it's a significant, I mean, this is the highest volume of all, um, and it's dropping. I don't know what happened to Apple at that point, but they seriously screwed something up. Um, and then it drops down to the next band, and as it bounces off of that band, you can be reasonably sure that at that point, that's the, that's the reversal on the, on the weak scale. Um, but if you go down to like a day, you'll see those same bars. And again, these are going to be drawn slightly differently because uh, they're all or they, they have an origin point on the chart um, because you have to start the, the EMA somewhere. So the, the, the period of the chart matters. Um, but as they as they move through the price, you know, the closer you get to the, the current day, um, that's when they start um, looking the same. Um, so as as you know, price moves through them, you can use that as a as a relative gauge for. Um, entering and exiting trades on any time frame. I mean, that's the whole point of, of it being fractal is that you can use this on any time frame and they will be proportionally the same. Um, just logarithmically, they, they are following these, um, uh, the, the scales fractally, which is, um, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's a, a neat way of thinking about um, how EMAs work and why they work and how you can use them on, on smaller scales um, and seeing the interactions between the different scales all in one place, um, which is kind of neat. I mean, and, and you, uh, here, let me get rid of this old anchored EMA. So the, the anchored EMA is um, one way of setting that up, and it's got multiple ways of setting it up if you want it to be exact. Um, so you can anchor it, you know, so you can anchor your, your 10 minute EMA on any scale, and it will always be at that same scale. So you can always see this one showing up in the same place no matter what. Um, and you can add more of them, you know, so you can add two or three of these anchored EMAs um, to match the, the, you know, the Ripster defaults, um, but then they'll be that default for if you like it on the 10 minute, but you want to see them on other time scales that aren't based on bars, but are anchored, then you can do that this way. Um, and, and again, the fractal EMA clouds for me are more... Um, I, I mean, I, I actually have been using them for a few weeks now, and they are... Um, it's, it's great confluence. It's a great way of seeing bigger trends relating to um, these, these fractal bands and how they you know, are used as zones. And it's, it's pretty cool to, to watch that sort of additional confluence uh, between the price action and you know, historical price action and the current price action. Um, just because it, it kind of gives me some insight into um, it, it's like elastic, you know, where, where it pushes down into these things and then it bounces out of them depending on how strong the price action is. And it's a relative gauge of that price action. So you can see when it bounces out of here, it's not really serious about going further down. And then it ends up bouncing off and then recovering. And then as it breaks through these, these successive layers, um, it flips them to green because now they're, they're, uh, the trend is moving positive again. And then even though on the, the, uh, on the smaller scale, it ends up you know, coming back down into it. Um, when you have this much confluence here, it's probably gonna bounce. These are all acting like little rubber bands um, in terms of the price action. So unless something really significant happens, these are, are feeling a lot of uh, the price action is, is moving up, which is what happened. I mean, on, on Friday, the, the price action um, ended up being very bullish, even though everything else was, um, I mean, I guess everything else was fairly bullish, but you can see that in the, in the trends, in the trend lines and how it respected that. Um, so yeah, so there's two, there's two different ways you can use, um, the, the EMAs. There's this, this fractal way that sort of auto generates them. And then there's the, uh, anchored EMA that lets you have a lot more control over exactly how you want them to set up. Uh, but then it just it lets you view them on any time scale. So um, I would love to hear if you use them, if they are useful to you, and if you have any um, suggestions or improvements, um, definitely let me know. Thanks.